Hi and welcome to WE8 videos. My name is Skip. And in this video, we're going to discuss engine failure in flight. So you will find in your pilot operating handbook a section on emergency procedures uh, for the 172N here. It's in section three and we have over here engine failure during flight. And just below that, of course, we have forced landings because if we lose our engine, we're going to be landing somewhere and it may or may not be at an airport. Now, this engine failure procedure and forced landing procedure, these are things you need to commit to memory. So for the 172, they're telling us we should get an airspeed of 65 knots. That's going to give us our best glide for distance. They're telling us to turn the carburetor heat on, make sure the fuel selection valve is on both, the mixture is rich, and ignition switch on both or start if the propeller is stopped. And then there's a prime for the engine on the 172. You want to make sure that's in and locked. So that's what you're going to do with the engine. So our engine has failed and we've got it all set up now. We have our 65 knots and all the stuff here required is done, but where are we going to land? Now I've discussed this on my series on flight planning. So when you are making your flight plan, you want to pick places with airports or places you know you can land in route. So if you do have an engine failure, you're going to have a pretty good idea of a place nearby that you should be able to land at. But you need to know how far you can go when you don't have any power. So how far can you glide this airplane before you slam into the ground? Well, guess what? The POH is going to tell us that. So let's jump forward a couple of pages here in the POH and we have the amplified procedures for engine failure. And here it's going to tell us how far we can glide this airplane. So they're saying here, if we look at the chart down below, speed at 65 knots. Remember, that's our best glide. And this is with the propeller windmilling, flaps up and no winds. So on this side, we have altitude, and down at the bottom, we have distance. So to make it simple, let's just say we're cruising at 4,000 feet, and we'll come across here, and that tells us that we can glide for six miles. So basically find a spot like this 4006 and where they intersect like this with our glide slope line. All we have to do is drop the zeros here and divide four into six and that gives us 1.5 which means it's going to be 1.5 miles per thousand feet. So look at your chart and find it where it crosses one of these points, just like it does here, and then divide the thousand feet without the zeros into whatever number this is, and you'll get your distance per thousand feet that you can glide. All right, so before you get out on a flight and practice this and try to land in a field somewhere, it's best to start at your airport in the pattern. That's what they do in real life. Your instructor is going to take you around as you practice your landings and you stay in the pattern. At some point he's going to reach over and pull the throttle back and say land the airplane, you lost your engine, and land on the runway. So here we are downwind for runway 33 at Reading Benton Field, my home base here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now I have to tell you, this is really difficult in the simulator. This is so much easier in real life, mainly because you can't be looking outside in the simulator all the time. When you try, you can't see. It's hard to scroll around. You're jumping all over the place. In real life, you can just stare at the end of that runway and you're just looking outside. You're looking outside and occasionally glancing at your instruments. But mostly you're looking outside and determining when to turn and what angle you need to take to get to that runway. So don't be surprised if this takes a while for you to get used to. So I haven't done this for a long time. Let's just see what happens. All right, I've unpaused. And let's see. 
Okay, we've just lost power. So we're going to trim for that 65 knots. And we're downwind. Now, we could be doing all those other things with uh, looking at the mixture and the carb heat, make sure that the carb heat's on and the fuel and the ignition's on both, if we have time. But for here, we just want to make sure we can get there. And we're barely past the end of the runway, and we're going to start our base turn. And we're just going to turn and try to maintain that 65 knots. Again, that's our best glide speed. So we're getting a little fast. All right, so we want to keep that runway in mind here. And just looking at that, I'm going to head over there now because I think we're already in trouble. So keeping our 65 knots, we're actually looking pretty good. Now, we're descending at 700 feet per minute. That's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty fast rate of descent here. Okay, I'm going to put in some flaps to slow us down because I'm pretty sure we can make this runway. And take the brake off here. And I'm liking this. All right, that wasn't too bad. Certainly a lot of room for improvement, and I will definitely be working on this. But there are things we can learn from our mistakes or just from what we just did, thinking it was okay, but how can I improve on this? So when I reviewed this, there's a couple of things that I thought about that really make a difference. And when I looked at the map, I realized, my goodness, I was quite a ways away when I was coming on down leg. Now you want to be between a half a mile or three quarters of a mile away from the airport on your downwind. And I think I was closer to a mile away. So this really cut my time to get to the runway. If I would have been say a half a mile on my downwind, I could have extended the downwind a little bit longer and made a very nice pattern move into the runway without having to cut it off like I did this this way here and just getting to the airport and just barely by the way so I would have had a lot more confidence with a little bit longer final and not having to come in at the angle that I did here to make this landing and another thing that really stands out in the simulator is our inability to see what we need to see so we are always in this forward view it seems and we'll scroll to the side and back but that's about all we do. We're mostly in this. If you're like me, this is the view we have all the time. But when we're trying to do a forced landing and we have a specific spot to hit, and we're really not sure where that is, we want to get that in our sights and we want to keep it there. So I want to learn how to use my views to get into a right place and, and scroll around and get into position where if this is where I want to land, I want to keep that in view all the time. And as I'm flying, as that, as that moves, I want to move with it and just keep my view there so I know what's going on. Because I can tell roughly if I'm descending too fast or if I need to get closer. But when you keep your eyes outside and you learn to fly that way and not just look straight ahead here, you're going to become a much better pilot. Another important factor on your landings, either regular landings or in an emergency landing here, are the winds. Now, when you're coming into the airport, you know downwind, you're downwind, and you're going to be landing into the wind. And the case is today here, if we look at Benton Field, we can see that the winds were 340 at 6 knots. So we're landing on runway 33, so we have a 6 knot headwind when we're landing, which means we have a 6 knot tailwind going downwind. So we're going to head downwind a little bit faster. And when we're doing an emergency landing, that could be very important. And you definitely need to factor that in when you turn base and then final on an emergency landing here. You may have planned it out perfectly, but if you haven't accounted for the winds, you could be in real trouble. 
So the one thing that got my attention is what I mentioned earlier, and that is where I came in on downwind. I was way too far away from the airport, and I really never paid that much attention to when I was flying. I would just fly in any old place I wanted to, even in real life. I would just go downwind, and if I was a half a mile, that was fine. If I was a mile, that was okay. I had power, and I could do the pattern, and I could do it halfway decent. But I now realize it's very important to be pretty much in the same place every time you come downwind just to make sure you are consistent with your landings. So I'm going to make an effort from now on to be within a half a mile to three quarters of a mile away from the airport when I'm on downwind. And if I do that all the time, when I have an emergency landing, if ever, I can look out and realize I'm three quarters of a mile away and do a nice traffic pattern even in a field somewhere. I'll know what that looks like. Let me show you what I mean. So here we are pretty much back where we started on our downwind. And this is pretty much what it looked like when I started this video. So I went back to that spot and I got Mr. GPS out. And look at this. I'm 0.9 miles away from the airport. That's just too far. You want to be within a half a mile to three quarters of a mile, and that would really make a huge difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the airplane closer. So this is going to be a lot of fun, really. So let's get the map. I'm just going to click on the airplane, and I'm just going to drag it. And I'm going to put it right there. All right. And then I'm going to restart. And now I'm going to bring Mr. GPS back. And now I'm 0.6 miles from the airport. This is fine. Between a half a mile and three quarters of a mile is looking really good. And when we look at the map, this is much nicer. So I could have, in that emergency landing, extended the downwind, made a nice base and final and a really simple, easy, normal landing with no power had I set it up properly. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set myself up downwind. Let me just get in a nice position here, downwind, midfield, a beam, the center, and I'm going to pause the simulator. And I'm going to come back and look at my altitude. Okay, I'm just a little bit above pattern altitude. So this is okay. Pattern altitude here is 1,720. So what you want to do is just get this sight picture in your mind. Just stare at this. Wherever you are flying, it doesn't matter. Get a half a mile to three quarters of a mile from your airport. Get yourself at pattern altitude and get this picture in your mind. So you know that when you're looking out the window, you don't have to look at your altimeter to know that you are 1000 AGL, above ground level. This is what it looks like. And when you know that, we know that this is three quarters of a mile. This is what we want. This is what we want to see. So when you're making that emergency landing, that spot will look just like this. You will know that you are a thousand feet AGL or close enough. And when you can do this, when you can fly outside the airplane, oh boy, is it going to be a whole lot easier. So this has really challenged me, and this is something I really want to work on. You know, it's funny, when I was taking my flying lessons here, my instructor would always ask me, how far are we from the airport? And he wanted me to know this visually without GPS or anything. And that's a really good thing to learn. You want to know when I'm three miles away or when I'm five miles away. And this can be very helpful, not only in emergency situations, but when you're just flying around and you're close to Class Delta airspace, you got to stay out of there. That's a five mile circle. So if you're at 5,000 feet, Look at that airport and find out how far you are from it and get that picture in your head for five miles so you don't fly into it unintentionally. You're going to get in trouble if you go into Class Delta airspace without talking to the tower. 
All right, I know I'm a little off subject here talking like this, but again, this is really helpful, and I think it'll make your simulator flying a lot more fun. In real life, when you're coming into an airport like Benton Field here, you have to make a radio call, and you're going to have to tell them where you are and how far out you are. And if you don't have GPS, there's just no way to know. It's a visual thing. And when I was coming back to Benton, I would always have to call in and say I'm on a three-mile final or I'm two miles southwest or something like that. And this was all done visually. So this is just something to practice. And you can pause the simulator and get your GPS out and make these measurements and get that picture in your head. And as you learn that and as you practice that, boy, you're going to find this a lot more fun. So jump in your sim, jump in your favorite airplane, set yourself up on a downwind, get this picture, and practice these engine failure procedures there, and then you'll be ready for the next video. All right, I'm sorry for all the rambling. That's it on this little video on emergency engine failure procedures. And I think I'll do another video on this, and we'll take a little flight, and I'll put myself in a situation where I don't know when... the the engine's going to fail, and then we'll see how we're going to respond. So that may be coming up next. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I love to talk to you guys. So thanks again for watching, and God bless.